Welcome to your weekly UAS news update, the place where you don't get your news two weeks late. This is the week of April 12, 2022, and we have four stories this week. The first one is more Mini 3 leaks from DJI, and we actually have a hint on pricing this time. It's actually pretty surprising. We'll talk about a GoPro that's coming up with a Hero 10 Black Bones. It's an FPV camera, and it's an interesting design. This is something people have been doing on their own for a while. We'll talk about the first FPV waiver that has been granted, and this is kind of important important, and we'll talk about why. And then lastly, we'll talk about our friends at Gresco that are acquiring DJI Arizona. Let's get to it. All right, the first thing this week is more Mini 3 leaks. Uh, it looks like the Mini 3 is going to be released on either the 27th or the 28th of April. Uh, this is leaks that are coming online. We'll also talk about other leaks that suggest that there is a possible one inch sensor on the Mini 3 Pro. Uh, it sounds like maybe there's gonna be different version of this drone, but um, we'll find out more. Obviously it looks like maybe April 27th, end of April. Uh, this has been uh, supported by many leaks on different websites, including Amazon. Now in terms of the pricing, this is a bit uh, surprising, but uh, the combo may start as low as $520, which would uh, give Hotel a run for their money on uh, the the drones that they released recently that were priced a bit a bit higher. And then uh, those combos can also go as high as $1,250. So a bit of a gap here. Obviously, probably uh, more batteries and uh, maybe different sensors or different. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Again, this is quite a bit of rumors at this stage, but. Uh, more, the more we go, and we know how this works with DJI product, the more we go and the, the closer we get to release date and the more uh, images get uh, reported. This week, we've also seen pictures of possibly an Inspire 3. Uh, the pictures were actually of a crash drone, but it looked like a model that we hadn't seen before, which looks a lot like an Inspire 2, but with some modification. So maybe we'll have more information about that as well. Uh, if you want more information about all these leaks, especially the Mini 3, uh, Drone Excel is the place to go. So uh, go get give our friend Haya a click and then uh, read these articles. He spends a lot of time finding all this information for you. The next thing this week is GoPro is coming up with a Hero 10. Now we typically don't talk about GoPro products on the show because they're not really related to uh, drones per se. Uh, they used to be, but not anymore. But this specific camera is gonna be called the Hero 10 Blackbones. And uh, this is an action camera specifically designed for lightweight FPV drones. If you've ever seen naked GoPros, which people have been designing, taking out the casing and basically keeping just the, the bare uh, bones of the, the, the camera. Uh, this is a Hero 10 with pretty much nothing except the sensor and then the, the electronics. Uh, pricing is gonna be about the same, $400. The resolution would be up to 5.3K at uh, 60 frames per second, and then what they have, what they call HyperSmooth 4.0. So again, head over to the Drone Excel article down here if you want more information about this. Next thing is our friend Kenji Sugohara. You've seen Kenji on the show quite a bit, the uh, president of the Drone Service Provider Alliance. He announced on April 11th that he received a BV loss FPV waiver uh, that does not require a visual observer. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because um, well, as you know, flying FPV, technically the FA requires that there is a visual observer next to the pilot in order to meet the requirements of visual line of sight. Well, what Kenji was able to do, and I know he's been working on this for a while. I know Vic from uh, the DSPA as well has been working on this for a while. Uh, they've been submitting waiver requests to the FA in order to do operation beyond visual line of sight, which in this case would be operating an FPV without a wave, without a visual observer. And um, this is based on sheltered operation. You've heard that concept of sheltered operation before, and they would be flying below obstacles. The idea here, the pitch to the FA is that um, there's not gonna be a manned aircraft flying below treetops or below what's called sheltered operation, below any type of large obstacles. And so, Kenji submitted paperwork. I know he's been going back and forth with the FA quite a bit, and uh, they were able to write this waiver and get it approved. So uh, there are some restrictions. We're going to put a link down to the uh, to the DSPA website where you can find more information about this. Uh, we're going to try to bring Kenji on the show to talk some more about it, or maybe just do a specific video about it. Uh, this is a topic that's important. If you remember, a couple of weeks ago we talked about the uh, ARC, the Aviation Ruling Committee, that released a report on with recommendations to the FA 
essay on how to do beyond visual line of sight. And part of this, there was a, the concept of sheltered operation, which they called EV loss. And uh, the idea is to do a, a local beyond visual line of sight flight where the drone may disappear from the line of sight of the pilot, but the drone is flying at pretty low altitude in sheltered conditions, in which case, well, the drone should be allowed to do more things that it can at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes. Uh, if more people are able to get the same thing, I know uh, Kenji is gonna be sharing the method that he used and hopefully we can get to the point where uh, these types of operation are more routine or even just completely allowed. If you remember in the past when the FAA came up with part 107, night operation were considered high risk. So the FAA required a, a waiver in order to do this. Over time, they realized that all these waivers were getting approved, that there was not a whole lot of accidents happening, or actually no accidents happening during these operations. And then they realized that they could relax the rules. So hopefully if we can get more people to get this type of waiver to conduct operation, prove to the FA that this is actually a safe operation, then they may be able to relax that in the next set of rules, okay? Don't hold your breath, but this is a step in the right direction. All right, the next thing and the last thing this week is our friends at Gresco. Uh, we've been working a lot with Gresco. They've been great partners with us and uh, they're uh, going to acquire uh, DJI Arizona. Now DJI Arizona, also known as Innovative UAS, will be merging with Gresco Technology Solutions. Uh, DJI Arizona has been servicing consumers in Arizona since 2014. Uh, they've been doing a lot of uh, DJI claims, but not only that, they, they had a lot of consumer drones available in their shop in Scottsdale. Uh, we visit them a, a couple times and, and we know the owners. And uh, they'll now be focusing on the enterprise market as part of Gresco. And uh, Gresco has been one of the leaders in providing UAS services to not only public safety, but also the electrical uh, industry, but also the transportation sector. So we wish all of them uh, good luck. And, uh, and we actually are going to have Gresco and uh, Tim Wiley on our Pixel Drone Show very soon. And so we're really excited to be talking about, uh, about this. All right, this is all I have. As always, like, subscribe, leave your comments. Uh, we have some uh, cool surprises coming out next week. We've been working on the project for a while. Uh, that's all I'm going to say for right now. If you're in our student group, we're going to be doing a, a release of that early. Uh, so if you're uh, one of our students, you'll be uh, having access to the cool things we've been working on. We actually have a ton of really cool projects in the works that are going to be coming out this summer. Oh, I can't wait to share those with you. I uh, can't say much more at the moment, but uh, but it's it's an exciting time to be at Pilot Institute. So that's it. That's all I have. Uh, we'll see you guys next week and uh, have a great week.